Good evening. My name is Father Fred Miller, and I am a priest of the Archdiocese of Newark, and I teach at Seton Hall University. I'm the spiritual director of our college seminary at Seton Hall. I'll tell you a story which is unrelated to Fatima, but <clears throat> many years ago, I don't even want to calculate how many years ago, I was a parish priest in St. Thomas More in Fairfield, not far from here. And every morning at one of the masses, there was this young man full of muscles who had just got out, gotten out of the army. That was Father Fred Pfeiffer. <laughs> and, and the Holy Spirit whispered in my ear, I think he should be a priest. So I said to him, Fred, why don't you um, go volunteer on the weekends at the shelter in New York City in the Bronx with the sisters of Mother Teresa of Calcutta? And he started going every week. He became the personal chauffeur of Mother Teresa a few times. I'll never tell you these things. And then finally he decided he heard the call of our Lord to become a priest. And it's amazing to me that this year, Father Fred is celebrating his 25th anniversary of, of ordination. And you're very blessed to have him here at Holy Name of Jesus Parish. Today, we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the sixth apparition of our Blessed Mother, Mary, to three shepherd children in Fatima, Portugal. On May 13th of this year, Pope Francis went as a pilgrim to Fatima to celebrate the 100th apparition of the 100th anniversary of the first apparition and to canonize the two young children, two of the three young children who had seen our Blessed Mother, St. Jacinta and St. Francisco. Surely it's safe to say, to express the opinion, that the church will also canonize Sister Lucia of Fatima in the near future. You know, Jacinta and Francisco died just a few years after the apparition. They were still only children. Lucia lived to, into her 80s. So if she hadn't lived so long, she probably would be canonized with them, but she just died about 10 years ago. So I'm sure that one day, not too far in the future, the church will declare her a saint as well. There was something unique though about the apparition of Our Lady that took place 100 years ago today. The people of Portugal were desperate. The First World War was being waged. More men died in that war than in any other war in the previous history of the world. The Portuguese were involved in the fighting. The people were also being oppressed by a Masonic government, a government that sought to destroy religion. And so when the word got out that the Blessed Virgin had made a new visitation, in the gospel today, we heard about Mary visiting her cousin Elizabeth in the hill country of Judah. A hundred years ago, Mary visited us in Fatima, and the word spread among the people so that on October 13th, 70,000 people came to be with the children at the site of the apparition. It's not 7,000. 70,000 men and women and children came. Mary had promised a miracle. She promised a miracle so that everyone would believe the message that she gave in the previous apparitions. And so I think it's safe to say that the miracle of the sun, which took place 100 years today, is the exclamation point at the end of the story of Fatima. 
If you look online, you'll find tons of copies of newspapers from Lisbon, from other parts of Portugal, written by reporters who had witnessed the miracle of the sun, many of them atheists. Let's go back in time a little bit before 1917. The three children were shepherds. Soon as a child was able to do so, he took his family's sheep and brought them to pasture every day. One day in 1916, the children experienced an apparition of an angel. They didn't know what was happening. They saw a bright, bright flash of light, and all of a sudden, there was a man. He looked like a young man, but he was radiating light. And this is what they tell us, the children tell us, Lucia tells us about that first angel apparition. The angel, after he appeared to them, knelt on the ground, put his forehead on the ground, and laid flat on the ground. And he told the children to pray this prayer after him. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. And the angel said that over and over again, the children repeating after him until it was embedded in their memories. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. But that's not enough. I also ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not love, adore, do not hope, and do not love you. My brothers and sisters, the angel's visit to the children left them, the word they used was annihilated. They experienced the holiness of God in a pure, powerful way, and they were exhausted for days after they saw the angel. They didn't tell anybody. They didn't know how to explain it. They knew that he was not evil, after all, he told them that he was the guardian angel of Portugal, the angel of peace. Now, let me tell you what I think about this. If you look in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, what's it about? The end of the world. Who's all over the book of Revelation? Angels. Why do they come into the world near the end, especially? to fight against Satan. Why do they come? They come to protect us and to keep us safe from Satan. They come to prepare for the end of the world, the second coming of Christ, and the final establishment of the kingdom. Although the angel didn't say that to the children, it would have scared them to death. I believe the angel of Fatima is the angel of the apocalypse the angel announcing the beginning of the last times. That's just my opinion. The angel came again several months later. He said to them in the second apparition, he prayed that prayer with them. He said to them, in every way you can offer sacrifice to God, in reparation for the sins by which he is offended, and in supplication for sinners. In this way, you will bring peace to our country, for I am its guardian angel, the angel of Portugal. Above all, bear and accept with patience the sufferings God will send you. In other words, now the angel is saying, make sacrifices accept the suffering in your life, and offer it to God for those who don't love him. The third and final apparition of the angel was extremely special and important. 
the angel brought the Holy Eucharist to the children. And he gave Francisco and Jacinta their first Holy Communion. Um, yes, Francisco and Jacinta. Lucia had already received her first Holy Communion. Jacinta and Francisco didn't know what was happening. The angel gave the host to Lucia, and then he took the chalice. It was suspended in the air, and he gave the chalice to, the, to Jacinta and Francisco to drink from, to drink the precious blood of Jesus. After it was over, Francisco said to Lucia, what did the angel give me? It felt like God was in me. It felt like God was in me. And Lucia said, God was in you. That was Holy Communion. So the angel gave the children their first Holy Communion to prepare them for the apparitions of our Blessed Mother. And the angel taught them this prayer. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly, and I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences by which he is offended. And by the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. See what the angel is doing? He's getting the children ready and he's getting us ready to pray for people in our times who are going against God, falling away from God. He's saying to them, us through them, Stop just thinking about yourself. Thinking of all, think about all the poor people who are endangering their souls and will go to hell because they're not faithful to God and to his commandments. The angel was preparing them for the visit of Our Lady. And every time the angel came, the children were prostrate for days, exhausted, unable to... Like living in a dream. On May 13th, when Our Lady appeared to them, it was different. The children were not afraid. They didn't know who she was. She had, they asked her, where are you from? And she said, I am from heaven. And the children said, well, we want to go with, to heaven with you. As soon as the children saw her, the first thing she did was she took away from them the fear of dying. And she told Francisco and Jacinta, you'll be, you'll be with me in heaven soon. Lucia has a mission. She's going to stay for some time. The kids were kids. So Francisco went and told his mother, I'm going to die soon. Why do I have to go to school? <laughs> so he stopped going to school before he, they knew he was not going to school. And he was going to the church every day and sitting in the pulpit where no one could see him and looking at the tabernacle. Jacinta did the same thing. She gave the children in a subsequent apparition a vision of hell where poor sinners go. The children said they would have died of fright had Mary not told them that they would be going to heaven. In each of the apparitions, Mary asked the children to pray the rosary every day for peace in the world and for the conversion of sinners. She asked them to do penance, and she assured them that all of their sacrifices would help people far away from God to turn back to him in repentance and love. This is the heart of the Fatima message. Say the rosary every day, for peace in the world and the conversion of sinners and offer everything as a sacrifice to God to save people from hell. The children prayed and made sacrifices, extraordinary sacrifices. By the way, Lucia's mother did not believe that she was seeing our Blessed Mother. She was mean to her and it really broke Lucia's heart 
that her mother doubted her. Her mother thought she was lying. Her mother thought she was seeking attention. After it was over, the mother had a change of heart. But that was just one of the many sufferings of the children. They said the rosary many times every day. There was interference from the hostile government officials in the town. The children were arrested and thrown into prison and threatened with execution. The government officials only released them because they were afraid of a revolution. Mary promised the children that there would be a miracle on October the 13th. This is what Lucia says. During the night of the 12th to the 13th of October, it had rained throughout the day, the night, soaking the ground and the pilgrims who made their way to Fatima from all directions by the thousands. By foot, by cart, and even by car they came, entering the bowl of the cova from the Fatima Laria Road, which today still passes in front of the large square of the basilica. From there they made their way down the, gently, the gentle slope to the place where a trestle had been erected over the little tree of the apparitions. Mary appeared on the top of a short tree. Today on the site is the modern glass Capalina, little chapel, which encloses the first chapel built there and the statue of Our Lady of the Rosary of Fatima. As for the children, they made their way to the cova amid the adulation and the skepticism of the people who accompanied them. When they arrived, they found critics who questioned their truthfulness and the punctuality of Our Lady, who had promised to come at noon. It was well past noon by the official time of the country. However, when the sun arrived at its zenith, the lady appeared as she said she would. Lucia said, in the name of the three children, what do you want of me? She said, I want a chapel built here to my honor. I want you to continue saying the rosary every day. The war will end soon, First World War, and the soldiers will return to their homes. Will you tell me your name? This is the name of Our Lady of Fatima. She said, I am the Lady of the Rosary. I am the Lady of the Rosary. I have many petitions from many people. Will you answer their prayers? And Mary said, some I will answer and others I must deny. People must amend their lives and ask pardon for their sins they must not offend our Lord anymore, for he is already too much offended. And is that all you have to ask? There is nothing more. As the Lady of the Rosary rises towards the east, she turns the palm of her hands towards the dark sky. While the rain had stopped, dark clouds continue to obscure the sun. When suddenly burst through them, and it seems to be a soft spinning disk of silver. The clouds part, the sun is in the sky, it looks like it's going around in circles. Everyone starts screaming, look at the sun. It begins dancing in the sky. It looks like it's going to fall and hit the earth. This goes on for minutes. People are shouting out their sins. They're screaming that it's the end of the world. The children see that but they also see something else. After Our Lady had disappeared into the immense distance of the firmament, we beheld St. Joseph with the child Jesus and Our Lady robed in white with the blue mantle next to the sun. St. Joseph and the child Jesus seemed to bless the world for they traced the sign of the cross with their hands. Okay. What is that? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the joyful mysteries of the rosary. 
When a little later this apparition disappeared, I saw Our Lord and Our Lady. It seems to me that she was Our Lady of Sorrows. Our Lord appeared to bless the world in the same way as St. Joseph had done. What's that? The sorrowful mysteries of the rosary. This apparition also vanished, and I saw Our Lady once more, this time resembling Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which in, a way, in some ways symbolizes the glorious mysteries of the rosary. The sun went back to its place, and everyone found himself dry, the ground was dry, and everyone knew that what Our Lady had said was true. That's what we're celebrating today, the miracle of the son of Fatima. My brothers and sisters, there's one message I want to leave with you tonight on this very momentous anniversary and that is the importance of saying the rosary every day. Not long before she died, Sister Lucia wrote this to all of us. She said, the most holy virgin in these last times in which we live. See, there it is again. These are the last times. Now, I'm, saying, I'm not saying Jesus is coming back tomorrow or next year or a hundred years, or even a thousand years. We don't know when the end is coming, but we're in the end times. And that means the battle between Jesus and Satan is going to get more and more intense. The Holy Virgin in these last times in which we live have, has given a new efficacy to the recitation of the rosary. So in other words, the rosary in these times is more powerful than it was before to such an extent that there is no problem, no matter how difficult it is, whether temporal or above all spiritual, in the personal lives of each one of us, of our families, of the families of the world, or of the religious communities, or even of the lives of peoples and nations. There's no problem that cannot be solved by the rosary. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the rosary. Our Lady of Fatima is Our Lady of the Rosary. And in these last times, she's given a new power to the rosary. So as we leave this church tonight, commemorating the visitation of the Blessed Virgin at Fatima, Let's bring with us the resolve, come what may, to pray the Holy Rosary every day for peace in the world and for the conversion of sinners, perhaps members of our own family, perhaps ourselves. And somehow by heeding this message, we're God's co-workers preparing for the second coming of the Lord.